Good afternoon and welcome to today's presentation, Protecting, Protecting Healthcare Profitability Through Proactive Energy Management. My name is Zach Kunkel and I'm going to be the moderator slash host of today's presentation. With the fast-paced, always-on nature of healthcare organizations today, saving energy may not be a top priority for you or your organization. In fact, ASHRAE estimates that hospitals spend about 51% of their budget on energy. Even though energy will never disappear from your budget, it is likely a resource that you could be more efficient with. But how? During our webinar today, we're gonna to be diving into how technology can help your organization better manage your utilities and hear how Martha's Vineyard Hospital is looking at managing, tracking, and reporting on their energy usage utilizing technology. So I wanted to run through a couple housekeeping items before I go into today's agenda. Just FYI, all phone lines are muted. If you do have any questions or need to contact myself or any of the presenters, please utilize the chat or Q&A feature that you'll find on your toolbar below. If you do have any technical difficulties, please utilize those features below and I will get you set up and squared away. If for some reason you do get booted from the presentation or your network drops off or anything like that, please sign back on the same way that you did first. And in a couple of business days, we will be sending out the recording of today's presentation. So just know that, that you will be getting a recording of this. Again, at any time, please feel free to utilize the, que the question and answer feature as we will be having a round at the end to ask some questions our presenters today. What does healthcare look like right now? What are some of the best practices that we've seen in energy management in relation to healthcare organizations? Then we're going to have a conversation with Braden Witt about how Martha's Vineyard has been utilizing technology. And then, like I said, we're going to close with a little Q&A session. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce today's presenters. So first we have Braden Witt, who's our lead mechanic at Martha's Vineyard Hospital in Massachusetts. So Braden brings a diverse skill set with a wide range of experience, not only in healthcare, but across an array of industries. From biomed to utilities, he leaves a wake of successful possibilities with his cutting edge process improvement skills. His knowledge of operation control systems allows the hospital to further its sustainability initiatives in new and creative ways. So next from the Dude Solutions side, we have Dan Arendt, who is a senior solutions consultant. Dan joined Dude Solutions in 2013 and is a professional certified energy manager through NC State University. Dan is passionate about empowering the conservation best practices. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dan. All right. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I will add, feel free to type questions as we, we go through the slides today. <clears throat> um, I've got a, a separate screen here. I'll be viewing those. If I can answer them in the, in the middle, uh, I'll certainly uh, feel free to, to do so. And I know Braden uh, would be happy to answer questions as well. So don't feel like you have to wait till the end, but just know that, that we're, we're monitoring those questions. So uh, I actually want to start with, with a poll, and this is more just out of, out of curiosity, uh, trying to get a feel for um, what uh, you all on the call are, are using um, when it comes to tracking energy and utility consumption. So feel free to um, go ahead and make your selections, and we will we'll get that pushed out. Can everyone see? Um, Everyone see those those question polls? Uh, it looks like Joe has mentioned that nothing's come through yet. Yep, I just Dan, I just launched it on our end, and so we've got a couple answers already coming in. Okay, perfect, awesome. I'll give that a couple more seconds, everyone, and then we'll we'll dive right in. <clears throat> All right, the poll is now closed. Perfect. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, let, let's dive in. And, and what we want to do today, uh, like like we looked at at the agenda, we're gonna we're gonna go through just some helpful best practice here in the the first kind of half of our of our webinar 
Uh, and I want to leave you with uh, just some helpful tips, those that your peers are using uh, when we talk about um, what I like to call strategic energy management. Um, so let's just kind of start with a snapshot of where we are today. When we think about uh, current realities, like, like Zach mentioned, hospitals are spending more than $10 billion a year in energy alone. We know from surgery centers, outpatient clinics, uh, across the whole gamut of your healthcare systems, <clears throat> because there are so many regulatory standards, because occupancy uh, levels are 24-7 are in some cases, uh, it's a major line item in your budget. And in fact, ASHRAE estimates that usually over half of the budget uh, falls into some type of energy line item. <clears throat> What's interesting about where we are today about 70% of hospitals, healthcare organizations are measuring energy savings, i.e., we've done a lighting project, uh, we've uh, adjusted or implemented some control set points in our HVAC systems, uh, we've reduced water by using low flow uh, technology, et cetera. We're, we're tracking the savings from these projects, but we're not actively tracking month by month, day by day, just general consumption. And we're going to talk a little bit about why that's interesting and, and why that poses problems um, moving forward. When we think about overall why the, the current state uh, of the industry uh, raises some questions, uh, price, price, price fluctuates even when usage stays the same, right? We know because of rates, uh, we know because of weather patterns, we know because of outdated infrastructure and equipment, we can pay more even if we're using less. With half of the budget spent on utilities, any savings go a long way. So we want to look at what is most commonly referred to in the industry as low to no cost options first. What, what's our low hanging fruit opportunity? What's interesting is the majority of, of our healthcare industry, we have the basic information available uh, from utility bills. It's a very common set of source data. How do we understand it? And of course, we know when we lower energy consumption, this creates budgetary opportunities. So if we can create revolving funds or we can prove savings, we can roll that into <clears throat> other opportunities. So let's talk a little bit about best practice and, and conservation ideas. Where do we even start? And, and I like to keep this simple. When I work with clients, uh, even when Braden and I were working together, when um, you know when we do seminars like this often, uh, it doesn't have to be complex. Now certainly energy management can become complex, but it doesn't have to begin that way. And so I like to start with easy questions. What, what do we even manage? What are we in control of? I, I was working with a client a couple of weeks ago, and it took months just to collect basic information. What what meters do we own? What utility bills do we see we receive? And the reason that this was complex and seems kind of odd is because a lot of your organizations, utility bills or budgets can be managed by different departments. So without any type of central repository, if you will, a central database, a collection point, it can be hard to track down what you manage, and I know Braden's going to speak to this uh, when we do uh, some interviewing in, in the end. It's just there, there is a concerted effort, and it takes some time to, to consolidate and collect and even answer the question, what do we manage? From there, where are our dollars going? Are we, are we doing best practice, common best practice like benchmarking? Do we know who our heavy hitters are? Do we know what zones in our facilities are using the most or consuming the most electricity or, or utilities? If we can answer these questions, right, if we can take a snapshot to say, what do I manage and where are my dollars going, do we have the ability to set priorities? Do I know if replacing, you know, the rooftop unit A is better than replacing rooftop unit B? Do I know if lighting retrofit as a project is going to be the best use of my funds versus some type of control update? So we want to have the ability to say, how do we prioritize? Low to no cost first, quick wins. And then how do we communicate those wins? This is something that I think Braden's going to talk a lot about, 
but, but communication cannot be undervalued. When we talk about reduction of waste, when we brag, for lack of a better word, and we tout all the things that we're doing as organizations, um, are, are we communicating that in the best way possible? And so where we want to start, low-hanging fruit. And these are some common areas, this, this little quadrant here. These are opportunities that when we talk about low-hanging fruit, when we talk about quick wins, these are some of the four key areas that I like to advise. <clears throat> Number one, just looking at my controls. Does my building set back when occupancy is <clears throat> zero or less as much as, as much as we can, right? Are we auditing our utility bills? Do we know if we're paying the right amount of money on our bills? Have we looked at our rates lately? Do we have opportunities for lighting projects? And then my favorite, preventative maintenance. Yeah, in my opinion, preventative maintenance is the best um, no to low cost savings opportunity when we talk about energy. Are we changing filters? Are we tuning chillers? Uh, right? Do we have schedules in place to prevent, um, you know, if someone leaves, we still maintain our infrastructure? I read an article the other day, 54% of energy savings opportunities are still behavioral in nature. But are we making sure that the mechanical opportunities we have are there as well? <clears throat> so this is what we want to, uh, this is what we want to offer. We, we call them the dude five C's. Um, I was very familiar with the, the three C's or the four C's or whatever it is when, when I proposed uh, and, and bought the ring for my wife. But this is the concept. Are, are these uh, five points, clarity, culture, compliance, cost avoidance, and communication. And we're going to dig into them a little deeper so that when you walk away or just as an introduction uh, from today's webinar, you've got a framework that you can work off of in your organizations to make sure that we are checking off these boxes of, of simple strategic energy planning. So let's start with clarity. Uh, and this may seem basic, but it does tie into what we've already kind of addressed and talked about is, do we know what we've got, right? Do we know what we manage? Do we know where our dollars are going? And when we talk about clarity, specifically relating to our utility bills and our meters and our usage, can we answer the question when our boards ask, when administration asks what we're spending and where, can we map them out? Do we have the ability to create uh, a digital duplicate, if you will, of our utility bills? Do we understand the line items on our bills? Do we understand demand charges? So in this kind of first bucket of clarity, the, the goal is not to have a plan. The goal is not to solve a problem immediately. We just want to know where we stand, right? The, the old adage that's very familiar and a little cheesy, but you can't manage what you don't measure. Right, we just want a snapshot of where we are today. From here, we talk about culture. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago in, in a seminar. Uh, this is really the golden egg, I think. Uh, we, there's a lot of resources out there uh, relating to mechanical opportunities in terms of saving, uh, in terms of reduction, uh, and Braden, uh, that's really his area of expertise. But really the golden egg is how do we empower others, right? If there's such a large opportunity with behavioral change, uh, I, I wish I knew the answer to be able to say, do this and your people will start turning lights off. Do this and you'll no longer have, you know, personal space eaters in every office. Right? I, I wish I knew how to do that. I don't. But one of the things we, we don't want to do is throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Even if we can affect 1%, 5% of our organization by communicating opportunity, by communicating results or impact, we want to begin creating a conservation army. Um, the reality is a lot of folks that we talk with, whether it be a facility manager, uh, whether it be an energy manager, you wear so many hats, and a lot of times your jobs feel overwhelming 
and you feel like if I add another thing to my plate, you know, trying to impact my peers or or whatever it may be, I, I can't manage it. I wear I wear too many hats already. What we want to what we want to encourage you with is to say there are people in your organizations that care about either uh, the the environment, right? They they care about the impact we have on our planet, or they care about the dollars. They care about the finances. They care about saving money. They care about being able to increase patient experience to reduce cost of of operations. And both of those things are valid. And so when we talk about what we can do. I've seen some examples uh, getting staff folks involved in building walkthroughs, right? So if, if we set a time, maybe lunch is provided or maybe some type of activity is provided, but what we're doing is we're allowing others in the organization to simply walk through the facility. And what do we notice? Do we notice things that are odd? Do we notice a lot of space heaters? Do we notice lights being left on? Do we notice areas of the building that are heated and cooled when no one's there? Right, simple savings opportunities that's allowing folks, your peers, stakeholders, to be a part of opportunity. When we talk about compliance, something Brayden and I talked a lot about um, a couple of weeks ago, just in terms of uh, Energy Star scores and, and, and projecting those scores or compliance in terms of ASHRAE standards. Right? Do you have the right data and reports for your compliance? knowing what you need to be monitoring, using reports to show your progress and ways to improve. When we talk about risk management, right, having data that we can quickly audit and pull up to say, these questions that we're being asked, we have an answer for because we're tracking. Cost avoidance, the fourth C, Measuring and validating savings and performance. So a lot of this is just kind of the nuts and bolts of a uh, part of your, your energy plan. Can we report on the savings of projects? And we know that about 70% of hospitals do in some way or another, but is, is it an easy process? Do you have to contract with consultants? Do you have to bring in engineering teams to help you do this? But the idea is, by, by monitoring consumption post and, and pre-project, are we comparing to a baseline year? Are we normalizing for multiple variables? Do we take into account how much weather impacts our usage? Do we take into account our occupancy levels? If we've added new wings or, or new um, facilities on campus, are we taking into account that increased area that we have to manage? And if we're not, we're really not reporting on true savings. And so having the ability to quickly establish a comparison year, quickly account for all these variables, will help you prove ROI quicker and cleaner. And it's really going to build that trust, and it's going to build um, really a partnership between end users, uh, end managers, and administration and board. And then finally, communication. And we wrap with communication. This is really uh, where I see a lot of organizations fail. It, it, it's not often, hey, uh, show the success of your projects or, or be able to track it. It's not often like group folks together so you know that care and can help us. It's not people understanding that you know certain practices are wasteful. It's just communication. And so when we talk about like how do we build this conservation army, what are some best practices? One of them is just communicating. Is there a regular cadence or rhythm in terms of, hey, this month or this quarter, this is what we've achieved? Or, hey, these projects we did this year, this was the outcome. Or even I had a, a conversation a couple hours ago um, with a large healthcare organization in Wisconsin, and the idea was, how can we take the data that we're tracking and put it in numbers that people understand? So if we could have a, a dashboard on a screen in, in the main lobby that shows, hey, you know, this much in energy savings equates to this many uh, baby dolls purchased or uh, it equates to this many blankets or this many cars off the road or this many trees planted, right? It's communicating data in ways that people associate with. And then documenting standard operating procedures, communicating this is how we want our facilities run. 
So when we talk about um, when we talk about setting these standard operating procedures, and I see the question that comes up, Joe, about touching on what regulations apply to energy efficiency. Um, some of those may may apply here. If we know ASHRAE standards, Joe, what I would what I would highlight is just like this is the level of uh, humidity that we need to allow in our buildings, or this is the amount of clean air that we need to bring in, or um, you know, if we've got certain regional standards that we want. LEED certified buildings or ENERGY STAR rated buildings, right? Are we, are we tracking towards that? And so being able to document standard operating procedures to say, hey, in order to maintain our LEED gold or our LEED silver or in order to get our ENERGY STAR scores, these are the things that we need to do. We need to have our set points at this level. We need to, you know, close our blinds at the end of the day and unplug our computers. Right, and I'll let Braden talk a little bit more about you know certain regulatory and compliance standards that Martha's Vineyard maintains, uh, but it's a great way to help ensure that. It's a great question, Joe. Thank you. When we talk about certain trends in the in in the industry, right, are there are there certain uh, initiatives or incentives uh, that we can go after? And this is something that that being able to do some research online about. Are there any rebates available for from our utility providers? Are there any incentives out there of, hey, you know, this organization or this utility will pay X amount of a project, of a lighting project or uh, an ASHI initiative? Uh, but many folks are seeking out, and there's a lot of resources online uh, in terms of researching where can I find uh, funding for certain projects or certain opportunities. So it's definitely something to consider when we talk about planning is do some research and understand are there grant monies available? Are there rebate dollars available if we do certain projects? And really the, the, the idea as we, as we kind of wrap and transition into talking with, with Braden some more, uh, the better the understanding, uh, the, the bigger the picture, right? The impact goes beyond financial statements and really gets into not only are we, are we saving dollars, but our brand image increases. You know, we're a, we're a healthcare system that really cares about the environment and cares about our budget. Better patient experience, right? These are things that when that takes reduction in the efforts that, that, you, uh, that you maintain and goes beyond just trying to save a dollar. It really goes, it goes into caring um, as we move forward. And so uh, how, can, how can technology help you? Um, like I said, you, you can't manage what you don't, don't measure. And as demand for patient services increase, tracking uh, your, your utility line items is going to become more and more critical in terms of having to do more with less. Conservation doesn't have to be the enemy of comfort and compliance. And that's something that I hear all the time is, well, yeah, I'd love to be able to, to set my you know, HVAC set points to this, but I'm going to get 100 phone calls the next day. Or I'd love to be able to do why but somebody has a problem with it. And I know that those realities exist, right? We constantly have to balance and battle. Um, but, the, but the truth is, uh, even nominal savings are savings. Even if we can adjust our set points from 71 to 72 in the summer, or 68 to 69, or 67 in the winter, right? Whatever the example may be, any savings we can find uh, they don't necessarily have to be uh, the enemy of comfort and compliance. And so with that, I really want to transition uh, with that introduction just in terms of uh, some best practice and just a, a little, um, you know, naming nomenclature of the five C's. I really want to get into the meat of why we're here, and I want to talk with Braden. Um, and I've got some questions. I I'm going to actually pause and let Braden uh, introduce himself and introduce Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and then we'll we'll have some Q and A, Braden and I together, uh, just as we as we dive a little deeper. So, Braden, why don't you introduce yourself, your background, the uh, the hospital, and and we'll go from there. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, my name is Braden Witt. I am the lead mechanic at Martha's Vineyard Hospital, or as my CEO likes to say, I'm her lead mechanic because I hold things down. So we are on an island off the coast of Massachusetts. So we uh we have an interesting seasonality here on our island. So. April through, or October through April, we serve about 17,000 full-time residents. In the summer, we balloon up over 100,000. So we live in a really unique environment here on the island. Uh, we're a 25-bed critical access hospital. 
and we serve the gamut. We are the, uh, our island's only healthcare provider. So we're emergency, we have outpatient, OR, acute, we, uh, we delivered 21 babies this month. So a lot of really interesting stuff happens here at Martha's Vineyard Hospital. And where would we go from here, Tim? Um, so we, uh, we partnered with Dude Solutions and launched Energy Manager earlier this year. And it's been, it's been very, very interesting. And I think this will go now. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's jump into kind of, kind of what, what we want to talk about. And we're going to come through these questions. I'll, I'll keep one. But, uh, Braden, I, I love that introduction. Uh, for, for those of you on the call, Braden and I worked together uh, earlier this year, uh, specifically around the energy topic. And we, we spent uh, a number of hours together uh, looking at, at software applications, looking at how, um, you know, Martha's Vineyard, uh, what their goals were, uh, Braden in particular, what your goals were, goals of your administration. Um, and so before we jump into that, uh, let's just kind of start with this first question is, uh, when, when you came to us earlier this year, historically, how were you managing and, and tracking your energy uh, and other utilities uh, before that. We just paid the bill. Um, like a lot of organizations, you know, uh, we, are, we are a part of a larger organization. So month to month, we just paid our bills and we weren't really tracking or managing anything. We managed and tracked all of our equipment. We did our PMs like you were talking about earlier, Dan, but we weren't managing our energy. We were just paying for the energy that we used. Yeah, and, and, and I'll ask a sub question. I know it's not something we prepped, Braden, but I hear that. I hear that more often than you would believe. Uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but why do you think that that, that exists, that concept of, well, we've got to pay it, we can't really control it, so it is what it is. Why, why do you think that exists? I, I think it's kind of a two-prong approach. I think part of it is, is in the, as we become more sustainability focused, it's opening up new avenues of possibility. But I also think in healthcare, I think that you feel trapped. You know, you can't, for us, we can't turn off many of the lights at night. So I think in, in the realm of healthcare and wanting to just stay compliant in so many ways, I think in, you just feel trapped so many times and you don't know where to begin with it. You know, we're already managing HVAC and lighting and all these different systems through other software platforms. And it seems like a really complicated way to go from paying the bill to managing what you're actually using. And I think it's been for so long, it was so hard to, to, to build those goals other than we got our lead certification, we don't have to do anything else. But as energy codes change, and as, as sustainability becomes a more attainable thing to roll out, I think it's becoming more and more um, easier to, to start to put tools like energy manager in place and grab a hold of where those dollars are actually going. Right, yeah. That's that's awesome, and uh, it, it makes me think. I, I read this study um, of all the controllable cost that you have as a healthcare organization. And I say controllable cost, things that you can act on. It may be better inventory management of supplies. It may be better maintenance management programs. Right, you can control what you spend. Uh, energy accounts for 16% of that opportunity, and so it's there. You can control. Uh, even if it's little by little, like you mentioned, even if it's just understanding where our low hanging fruit lies, maybe we're on a rate schedule that we didn't know we'd been stuck on, but actually because we are lead certified now, we shouldn't be on that rate anymore. Right. Or, or, or maybe. Understanding, or understanding, yeah. understanding how to manage load during peak times and being right. able to bring your, you know, to work with your control companies and your, your BAS systems to understand how to manage, you know, staging chillers during peak time. So instead of just ramping chillers up when it gets hot at 3 p.m., of running a more staged approach. And I think right. that's when I mean, energy becomes really important is, yes, you're staging your chillers, but what benefit are you gaining? Right, right. You, and you, you, you made a key statement that I want to highlight. You said working with your control organizations or working with fill in the blank. And I think that's super important that you highlighted is going back to what we talked about earlier, this doesn't have to be something you manage alone. So utilizing resources and relationships that you have, whether it be a contractor that you're already you know, using or a vendor that you're already contracted with, being able to reach out and say, hey, 
I know that staging chillers is important. I may not have the expertise to know how to do it. Can you help? Yeah. I, I think that was really crucial what you said. Awesome. Um, so what, what sparked a more focused approach? For us, one of our, our big lead-ins to starting to look for an energy product was a couple years ago, we rolled out a, a huge energy conservation program of, of setbacks and VFD programs and new chillers. And it was, a, it was a huge expense. We got the rebate back from the utility, but that was two years ago. Over two years, when, you operate, when you're a building operator, there's forces that get in place, set points get changed. And we, we wanted to be able to validate without having to bring in another engineering firm, how could we really start to validate this program we put in place? The board was starting to want to hear um, where we were with it. We wanted to be able to speak to people through our continued success of, of, of the energy management or energy savings program we had rolled out. Yeah. And so, and I think that leads into this next question is, so how did the day-to-day the -day tracking, why was that important? Um, you know, day-to-day, -day, we, we're on an island and we try to be good stewards of the island that we live on and of kind of the environment as a whole. So one of the things that we are, we are dedicated at this, at, at our organization of being conscious of what we're doing, of making smart efforts, of, of making sure that the waste we're creating is going to multiple sources you know, we track, we, we recycle oil, we recycle food out to animal farms. So we have a lot of initiatives that we do. And it became really important for us to be able to validate all of these streams of renewables that we're using, of managing our solar array, managing, you know, energy that we're doing, new boilers we put in place. And so there was, there's so much data that I'm buried under on my desk day to day we needed, a, we needed a tool that would help us start to focus in and track those, in, those, those different kinds of energy, we, not just power, electricity, and fuel, but also right. our recycling programs, our wastewater. Are we, are we paying for wastewater for water we're not generating? And all of those different points of how can we manage, you know, 47 different bills across a unified platform. Right, right. Yeah, and, you, and it, and it I think it's so interesting, um, you, you know, you had this really massive sustainability project that you launched and you, and you made the, the statement, but that was two years ago. And so it's, it's, not, it's not saying that that project uh, was uneventful or unimpactful. It's just saying that, uh, to put it in another way, a, a facility manager at a university locally here said, the reality about low-hanging fruit is it always grows back. And so being able to track energy, like you mentioned, and not just energy, but other commodities, are there are low hanging fruit opportunities that we haven't seen, but there's also opportunity for that large project that you launched. Control set points get set back. People are in the buildings, things change. And like you said, if you're not tracking that on a monthly basis or even a daily basis, how do you know the impact of those changes and be able to correct them? I, I think that's uh, it's just such a good uh, a good example. Um, so so bringing it to the present, right? We mentioned that uh, this is a relatively new endeavor for uh, for yourself, Braden, and also for Martha's Vineyard. What challenges or hurdles did you face when we when we first launched this project, and what are you facing now? If you can uh, highlight any of those, I'll start with the present one. So we are we're about. Um over a little over the halfway mark of the implementation of energy manager. And we've had a lot of success with some of our easy bills, but the biggest, the biggest one we're facing right now is from years and years of how we were paying our bills. Uh, we have two large oil tanks on site that can, that go to different parts of our building. And our, our vendor bills us in a single bill for both tanks. So we're having to try and go through and break that data out to be able to separate consumption across the building. And that was kind of the, un the, the part of this that we didn't anticipate going into the rollout was how the amount of effort it was gonna take up front to quantify data and get it ready to become usable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were going into this, I thought it was just gonna, I thought, you know, the challenges we were gonna face were gonna be these complicated um, software-based things of how we can, you know, validate BAS data and all of these other um, 
data sources, thinking that the comp that what I thought was going to be the complicated data sources turned out to be the really easy spots to pull data from. The hard one is when you start having to deal with multiple vendors that are not necessarily feeding you data the way you want to see the data. And so right, that's right. been the biggest hurdle for us is taking messy bills and making them valuable data. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, Braden, when we were talking. Um, you, you had mentioned one of the things that you want to share is just that, um, just like with any project, there's no, uh, there's no such thing as like uh, a quick way to get rich or an easy win, right? It takes concerted effort because you are dealing with so many disparate sets of data, so many different vendors, if I remember correctly. Yes, and what's been really great and what's really cool about the Dude Solutions Energy product is now that a mo many of my bills are set up in the system, it's, a no it's so easy now. It was that, it's that initial sprint to import that, that really took thoughtful approach. And then that's what's one of the cool things about this product is now, when I get an in, when I get a power bill, it takes me about 20 seconds to get that data fed in. So there was a big return on that initial investment of time of being able to get me and the team who work with me on this up to speed of how to interpret that energy data and import it. So that initial investment of, of hard fought time of, of interpreting bills, we've seen that payoff in the long term now. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think that really translates into this next question. So what early wins have you experienced? And, and you may have already answered or you may have some other um, other early wins. The one I just got a new uh, power bill yesterday, I think it was. And I was looking at looking at our trend data and we saw that April or February's bill was up an unexpected increase in power consumption. By seeing that in the trend log early on, when we got this month's bill through April, we were able to to correct course and come back in under where we were projected to be for this year and actually less con consumption than last year. So it's those kinds of quick accessible analysis that from the way we're putting in our data, I was able to course correct, you know, 30 days after seeing an increase and get us back on course and actually a little better than we were from, from figuring out where we need to go dig on where we were over. Right. So we were able right. to look at that power data look and see, well, we have a peak here, what piece of equipment that was running that would pull that, that would push us to that kind of peak. And so we were able to look at some stuff there and figure out where, where our energy was going. Yeah, and, and, and like you mentioned before, you know, just comparing that to your historical process of just paying the bill, I mean, that would have just been an assumed, all right, you know, we miss it. Yeah. You know, can be, you know that, that, that simple just pay the bill that can cost you uh, those unnecessary thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that add up to being that that new really awesome project that you want to do and you're just throwing that money up into the air because you it's it seems so daunting to take a hold of your energy because you just think well we're using it that's what it is so being able to really start to see how much control an organization has over their energy usage. Right. Yeah, I, I want to throw another uh, another curveball at you, Braden, a, a question that I hadn't prepped, but just the, the real world kind of examples you're giving me sparked, uh, sparked this question. I hear a lot when I work with clients that um, the concept of taking savings and turning those into, like you mentioned, the next big project or taking savings and rolling them into maybe a revolving fund that you can, you know, save and recoup those costs. What's been your experience that with your uh, administration or, or uh, how do you think now you'd be able to justify using those dollars for future projects? I don't know if it's about, uh, about moving those to future projects, but I think it's, it gives a, in some ways it does. It's that being able to, to budget to a smaller swing and to, you know, to look forward in the future a little more. But I think it also gives a boat of confidence when you start going to your C-suite executives or to a board to be able to quantify a past project in a unexpected way without having to okay. spend money to continually prove a program. So it gives you that a way to, to build a set of confidence of making mm -hmm. you know, something like energy manager 
a, a visual you're, com you're, you're communicating with. So it's one of those kinds of projects and tools that, well, you know, it's, it's so, it gets so hard sometimes with budgets to take from this pot and move it over to here, but that being able to project analysis and, and almost, you know, looking into the future from trends gives you right. ability to go to those decision makers with quantifiable data instead of a, well, we hope we're going to hit this goal or right. we're hoping that we're going to be able to, to meet this energy, this energy, you know, savings of, you know, this or that you're able to say, or negotiate with a, with a utility vendor for us. It, you know, we, we are on an Island, so we have to run propane and fuel oil. We can't use liquid natural gas. So we're able to, to look and say, okay, last year, this is what we actually used. Or we can go back three years to a really cold winter and say, well, here's how much propane we used and be right. able to of having to dig through years of bills and blah, 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 blah and spreadsheets. I hop right. in the manager, I set the calendar, I run a report and I'm like, oh, this is how much propane I need this year. Wow. And yeah. I didn't have to bring in a consultant, three engineers and sit in 30 meetings. I got to sit down at my desk for 10 minutes and make a decision. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I asked that question just because I hear it a lot is what, what can we do with data? Um, as, and that's a really great case study. So um, before we jump into Q&A, Braden, uh, I know Joe, uh, you've got a question here. Uh, it's a great question about um, for tracking how everyone does it. What about submeters? Uh, it's a great question that I want to address. So thank you for asking it. Um, what advice, Braden, would you give uh, just in the realm, maybe even to Joe's point uh, on tracking, what, what advice would you give to those on the call uh, regarding tracking your utility cost and consumption? I think when it starts coming to things like adding sub meters and breaking branches out and looking at different ways, of, you know, electricity th seems to be the easiest one. Um, I, I really encourage people to, to set, to go into it setting go goals you wouldn't expect. So really setting those some different goals and going into a program like this with a really clear goal, because you might be surprised at the places you can achieve those goals without having to go into the cost of adding submarine. What data can you pull from your BAS system? What, what data points does your, does your equipment already have you haven't tapped into? And so setting okay. those really, that really clear goal of, you know, more than what is, how do I save energy? But setting those goals of, I want to be able to see X, Y, and Z. You know, for us, it was a very specific, it started with a very specific part of our HVAC system because we knew we had invested so much money there that I wanted to be able to scope in on that. And so Dan helped guide us and merge us through, through many, many, many conversations about how to find that data in the data we already have. So while submarine, submarine is a sub metering is an easy, quick way to, to break out that data. I think a lot of people would be surprised at how much of that data you've already got available without having to do a expensive sub metering project. Awesome. Um, that was really helpful, Braden. Thank you. Um, and thank you for, for answering the questions and, and uh, you know, taking some of my curveballs. I, I think it's super helpful. Yeah, always to hear. So let's do this. Um, Joe, um, thank you for asking your questions. Uh, any other questions, uh, you know, we'll move into a time of just open Q&A. If anybody's got any thoughts, um, while we're doing that, while I give everyone a couple of seconds to type a question in, it could be basic, it could be specific to your organization or not. Um, Zach, do you have kind of a breakdown like Joe's question for everyone that's tracking? Uh, maybe just a simple, most folks are using spreadsheets, most folks are using some type of system or nothing at all. Do you have the results from that poll? I do, Dan. Uh, I can share those results out. Perfect. So everyone should be seeing the screen, uh, and it looks like about 33% of people on the call are using an energy management software. Uh, a couple people here and there are using Portfolio Manager. Some are using Excel. Uh, and then it looks like a lot of people aren't able to necessarily track it yet. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, as we, uh, and I'll give, uh, give folks a, a couple more minutes just to type uh, a question that comes to your mind. I want to I wanna just walk through a little bit about what we've talked about today, just dude solutions and, and how we help 
Uh, obviously, like we've talked with Braden, um, <clears throat> uh, energy management platform designed to track not only your utility bills, but also information from um, 15 minute interval uh, meters, things like this, uh, to give you an idea of that cost and consumption and, and how that breaks out. Uh, but there's also a couple of other uh, platforms. Uh, so when we talk about plan maintenance or tracking maintenance operations, we've got the work sub suite of products uh, and then advanced management products as well. <clears throat> um, so as we put this other poll on the screen, uh, we just would like more information on any of our products that we've mentioned today. We can certainly provide that for you. Um, would anyone, uh, is anyone willing to share? Joe's got a question of the 33% of people using software, what products are they using? Uh, any any platforms out there that folks would be willing to share with Joe? So Dan, I actually do have a couple seated questions. If you're if you're willing to answer, I I know in the past and on certain webinars like this, a, a key question that I always hear is, who do I need to involve as far as key stakeholders in this energy management program? Uh, so I would love to hear maybe in your experience on, with clients that you've talked with, who are those key stakeholders or departments that need to be involved? And maybe also, mm -hmm. Braden, what, what departments are involved with your program as you guys have started to have a more focused approach on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, Braden, I'll let, you, I'll let you go first. Who was involved uh, with you all and who needed to be involved? And then I can add some color just with other clients of ours as well. Uh, so for us, it started out uh, with our enterprise level accounting team to do an initial kind of a grab of accounts and all of those. So we started at the, the, the enterprise level and then we kind of worked with our local accounting team. And so we've got accounting, we've got kind of our enterprise real estate team, all of our vendors. The, the vendors we've had kind of the most success with, of course, you know, your energy grid vendors are good. Um, so our vendors that we have strong working relationships with, we've seen good benefit there of them being able to help us get data the way we need it. And then throughout the building, we've tried to plug in different voices, you know, from the clinical side, we've tried to keep our clinical uh, medical staff involved just to better understand how we can help manage their spaces better. What do they really need lighting wise? What, what setbacks, other setbacks should be achieved for moving through all of this? And then we've also involved a few key members of our senior leadership team just to help better figure out how to set goals in all of this and how to set some of those, not just cost reduction goals, but presentation goals of how can we put together energy data that people can easily understand at that level. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I would say that that follows right along in line with, with what I see with our clients. Um, usually accounting is involved. Um, uh, C-suite, you know, level um, or boards, councils, uh, and then also peers, uh, like, like Braden has mentioned, just uh, being able to work with others in, in his department, uh, uh, maintenance technicians, um, and then really peers on a global standpoint. So uh, all the folks that work, you know, even rotating screens like dashboards, so, you know, nurses and doctors and patients can, can have access to data. Uh, at least from a reporting perspective. Um, good question, Zach. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, and I, I got a, I got a couple more just because we got some more time. Um, so, Braden, when you guys were looking at having a more focused approach on energy management, I'm sure you got to the question and to the point that Dan was talking about in regards to finding those low-hanging fruit opportunities. What, what? as you roll out this new program, what have been some of those opportunities that you guys have uncovered or maybe that are you're continuing to look into to uncover? Uh, one of the ones that we, that we really started to dig into is cardboard recycling and trying to understand better how cost effectiveness of different ways of recycling cardboard and managing the volume of cardboard we create as a healthcare facility uh, so that's one of the things that we're doing an interesting study on right now. So we're tracking a lot. We're looking at putting in about put a lot of our recycling data in. So that's one of the more interesting things we've started looking at is getting really, really specific in the things we want to track. Awesome. Thanks for that insight. Yep. Uh, and Dan, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but uh, we are running up on time and I wanted to 
just thank everyone for attending. Um, any any last minute additions from you, Dan, or you, Braden? No, I appreciate everyone's time today, and uh, good luck. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that energy seems big and scary when you first get into it, but the more you get into it, you really start to learn interesting things about your facility, your teams, and I think it, it, it's something that is undervalued, and I would really encourage people to take a hard look at their energy and see what you can learn. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and thanks, Braden, for your willingness just to share some of your best practice and some of your journey. We really appreciate it. And uh, thanks to everyone uh, on the call. Uh, we appreciate your questions and I look forward to, to speaking with you further. All right, guys. Thanks so much for your participation and thanks everyone on the call for hopping on. If you do have any questions, please feel free to route them to us. Uh, if not, we look forward to hopefully talking with you again soon. Thanks, everybody.